If I go to the balance sheet, we're at 30783 Those subledgers are often the issues that get messed up. The subledgers for inventory, the subledgers for vendors are the things that we often forget about when we're thinking about it in terms of simply debits and credits, right? And then if I go back on over here and I track it from my vendor center, on the vendor center, now we have the purchase order. If I go into the purchase order, it has now received. We've received the purchase order. And then we have our bill. And of course, we now need to pay the bill at some point. If I do that with debits and credits over here, let's just say this is going to be the bill for the inventory. What happened? Inventory is going to go up. I'm going to say equals the inventory from a debit and credit standpoint. And the other side uh, is going to be going to uh, accounts payable. And it was for $100, 100. I'm going to represent the credit with a negative 100. So debits are positive, credits are negative. If I, re if I record that over here, then uh, we have inventory going up, inventory goes up, boom, and then accounts payable goes up in the credit direction. So that's what we have thus far, debits and credits still in balance. And the next step would be ha we'd have to pay off the accounts payable with cash. We don't have any right now because I didn't put any on the books, but, the, and this is just showing this one transaction doesn't have all the other detail that was in our balance sheet over here, just to give you an idea. So then uh, if I go to the, to the home page and we're going to say, okay, so now I've got my inventory. I made my sales order. So now I want to, I have my psychedelic surfboard. I can create an invoice from it. Now, the way that would probably happen is we would go to the customer center and this person that ordered the crazy psychedelic surfboard would be like, I, I'm ready to, to get the surfboard. And so then we're going to go in here and go to the sales order and I'll create. Now notice that you could create uh, the invoice from either of these documents, an estimate, a sales order, or even the bill if we custom ordered uh, the, the, the bill that we created. That's why I made it unbillable. I'm going to make it here from the sales order, which might be a kind of normal type of, of process to complete the order from the sales order, because maybe we don't have that inventory situation that we had to purchase the inventory directly for that customer, right? So I'm going to go here and say that we're going to create an invoice from it, from the sales order. It says specify what include on the sales order. We're going to order invoice for all the sales orders. So everything on the sales order. So we'll say, okay, it pulls it in. And so the date is once again going to be sometime in 01, let's say 09 this time, 27. Boom, 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 boom. I should put terms of like net 30 or something. And then, so there's our item pulls in and our detail down below. So what's this going to do? The invoice is actually fairly complex and what it's actually recording here, we can see that it's got 18858. That's the total amount that's going to be increasing the accounts receivable. And then the other side's going to go to sales, but the sales only going to be for the amount that we charged the 175. The 1358 difference is going to be then uh, the, the, the sales tax payable, which is a, a liability account. And we're going to have the cost of goods sold is going to go up an expense account as well as the inventory going down and the sub ledger for inventory is going to be going down and the sub ledger for the for the customers is going to go uh is going to go up <laughs> so let's do that with a journal entry first so let's say we have the invoice invoice so what accounts are affected well we know the accounts receivable is going to go up the account receivable is going to go up for the amount plus the sales tax. Let's do that. I'll do that in a second. And then the sales or income is going to go up. Now the income we would know because we charged 175. So I'm going to say that's negative 175. It's a credit negative 175. And then we had sales tax payable. The government wants their piece, their protection money, sales tax pay. You want to work around here? You want to, you want to be in business around here? Well, it's going to cost you. This is for your own good. So we'll say this is going to be equal to this times 0.75. Is that what they did? That times 
0 0.0775, 0 0.0775. So we come out to about uh, 1356. Let's add some decimals here. Adding a couple decimals. We'll add some decimals now that they've made it complicated with decimals. Okay, you had to do that. And then the negative sum of this is, is the receivable amount, right? So that's one half of the journal entry. And then we, if we have inventory, we've got to deal with that whole thing, a whole nother thing to deal with. So now we're going to have uh, the cost of goods sold. Let's do it this way. Cost of goods sold is going to go up. And then inventory is going to go down. And that was for $100, I believe, an amount that's not on uh, this form, but we noted it was there and will be recorded on a perpetual basis because we turned on the inventory. So there's 100, negative 100. So, so let's record this now. Accounts receivable goes up. This equals the AR is going to go up. And then the inventory, and then the income is going to go up. So on the income line, income equals that. It goes up in the credit direction. Sales tax payable, I have to add that. It's going to be a liability. I'll put it under the accounts payable. I'll select these. I'll just drag this down and say this is going to be formatted like that. And I'll call this sales tax payable. Starts with a zero, copying down this formula. And that one is going to go up in the credit direction. And then we've got, uh, we've got the that's done. And then the cost of goods sold is going to go up down here. And inventory is going to go back down, back down to zero on the inventory. Hopefully I got that, uh, that everything correct there. So, so then I don't know why that one was showing as red. 